Hi folks, we're going to have a quick look at um, two torches today. Uh, they're both by Maxstock. Uh, one is the M1, M1 Archer and this one here is the M2. Now, a, a quick word about Maxstock. Um, I'd said on one of my earlier videos that I would lean towards flashlights that were available in the UK. Um, and I think these have just started to appear on um, Amazon, but so far as I could see they were being shipped from overseas. Um, but I've ordered several torches from Maxstock and um, I've had no problem with um, either the communication from Maxstock or the delivery times. So I, I, I'm normally shy away from ordering things from abroad, but to, uh, from my experience I, I can recommend Maxstock for that. I have gone to their customer support um, and asked various questions of some of the torches that I've had previously and I've had sort of immediate responses. So if my word's worth anything, probably not. But for what it's worth, um, I, I certainly recommend um, using and ordering from Max Talk Direct uh, if you fancy any of their products. Now, in terms of um, the, the the quality of the products themselves, they, they, these are really a premium brand. I mean, just the the, the knurling is, is is butter smooth. Uh, the build quality is superb. Um, can't really fault them to be honest. So. I'm not doing a sales pitch there, by the way, for Maxstock. I'm just being as honest as possible. So let's have a quick look at the um, uh, the, the performance of, of these lights. So we're looking at the moment, firstly, with the M2, and we can see we've got five modes. Eco starting at 30 lumens, 19 hours, and so forth. Moving all the way up to turbo, 2,000 lumens with a runtime of 40 minutes. Um, high, 1,000 lumens at one hour. Throw a distance of 600 meters. Mm, yep. So we're definitely talking at a throwy type um, uh, torch here. Impact resistant 1.5 meters, IPX8 waterproof. Okay. Uh, the M1 uh, has three modes, low, medium, and high. Um, 200 lumens for eight hours, medium 1,000 lumens for one hour, 25 minutes, and 1,650 lumens for 40 minutes. Now you probably notice there's a little, little asterisk thing there next to the 40 on this one as well as there was on the um, on the M2. I'll come back to that in, in a moment. Um, the first thing that um, struck me with these two is that they've both got uh, the same LED and yet the turbo mode is 2000 lumens on the M2 with a 600 meter throw and the high mode which I suppose that's going to be the same as the turbo on the on the other model, 650 lumens, uh, but with an 800 meter throw. And yet, when we look at the um, the heads there, we can see, well, uh, as I'd expect, a, you know, a larger than average head, but by no means, you know, a huge head. You know, particularly not when you compare it with, say, um, you know, the old like Javelot. You know, a lot, lot smaller head for. Than what you would expect for a throwy type light, but we do have the the large, deep, smooth reflector. So you know that that's always a giveaway. You know that you'll be looking at a throwy light there. But what the difference is that the, the, the key difference, and it has a significant effect on how these two perform, is that the M1 has um, an SST D domed LED, whereas the M2 has the dome intact. Uh, I did mention this on one of the other videos, so I'm not going to labour on it too much but um, that is a domed LED with uh, whatever substance it is they use to create this this dome effect on top and this is a, a de-domed LED so some manufacturers modify them themselves some have them shipped out that way so it would be the same LED it's um, it's an SST uh, minus the dome and what what effect that has uh, a domed LED throw its light in a fairly even pattern across the spectrum of its beam whereas the D-domed LED will concentrate much more centrally its beam but with a slight reduction um, or, or significant reduction whichever way you want to look at it in its lumens output uh, and that's why we've got the same LED uh, putting out 650 lumens 1650 versus 2000 because it's been D-domed but on the other hand, that's why we've got the slightly increased range. Uh, and the difference is quite remarkable, which we'll see when we go out with them 
at night. Now, in terms of the um, the, the mode of operation, uh, the M1, it's a simple tail click, you one click on, um, it's memory mode, it will remember its last mode, and you can just press three times to cycle through its high, medium and low. Pretty simple. Uh, the M2 is a little bit more um, complex. What we have for this one is a single click for on, and it will cycle through four of the five modes. A double click takes us into turbo. A slightly long click takes us off. Without any other alteration or modification or gizmos or, or combinations of button pressing, instead of a one click on, we can hold slightly longer and now it goes into the ramping mode where we simply now hold the button and it will ramp up to its full power and the full power would, would include its turbo mode and then simply back down again. So you've got access to two uh, completely different uh, UIs there depending on which you prefer or with the uh, M1 we've just got the you know the straightforward clicky with the, the three modes. Now the the, the one thing that um, or reservation that I had about these um, unfounded res reservation that I had about these lights when I first had them is that uh, with that type of output um, and um, this little kind of asterisk that you're referencing the, um, the, the run times I looked into it just a little bit more and uh, what Max Tuck is saying on their web page about the M1 um, is that it has a hard step down at 3 minutes taking it from its 1650 lumens down to a thousand uh, but it also makes reference to an, an intelligent overheat protection whereas on the M2 um, it doesn't reference um, any hard step down it just mentions a, an intelligent overheat protection at 65 degrees uh, and then the torch will step itself down and that will obviously be dependent upon the environment that you were using it in so I was expecting these to be running pretty hot and not to uh, provide uh, a particularly long run times on, on their turbo modes given the, given the size and the, uh, my sort of estimation of the uh, heat dissipation capabilities of the, the head and the heat sinking on there. Um, so I did put them to the test. I'm going to edit that part in at the moment. Or, uh, the, sorry, in, in a moment I'll edit that part in. Um, the results were very, very interesting and, and, and very satisfactory. So we'll take them out and see what we can do with them. We've got the M1 at the moment just on a, a little heat versus um, output test. I don't think you can see the uh, the reading on the lux meter there. That's, uh, that's just for me to detect any drop in power and there hasn't been any um, so far. Uh, I've set my stopwatch there for 15 minutes on a countdown so we're uh, uh, well over halfway down um, it hasn't stepped down at the three minutes um, I didn't think that it would to be honest um, I've used this quite a lot and <coughs> excuse me uh, I didn't think that it ran particularly hot um, I mean uh, it's getting warm to hot now um, but it is on full mode but to uh, quantify that for you uh, on the heat sink on the body of the torch there, you know, where we're looking to hold it, 23, the heat sink, 36, moving up towards the head, 52, uh, right on the, on, on the top there, the heat sink, as I say, sort of a lot less, and where you're holding it, 30 odd. I mean, that's that's still warm, getting on hot, um, but it's it's not it's not uncomfortable to hold, and it hasn't stepped down. Uh, I'll keep it running and uh, see what happens. Okay, so just uh, just short of ten minutes in, um, it has dropped. Um, dropped down now. Um, didn't just quite catch it. Yeah, so getting pretty high into towards the top there. It I didn't just catch it when it dropped down, unfortunately, but uh, it was uh, just short of um, t ten minutes into its run time um, so it doesn't look like it's got a hard set set at three minutes um, the web page I think is a little bit contradictory because it does it does mention 
intelligent overheat protection which seems to imply that um, it'll lower itself at a given temperature and I suspect that it's probably similar to the uh, M2 there when it's got an internal temperature of 65 but I'm not sure um, but running on, on on turbo mode there for 10 minutes um, is it, it, pretty impressive and it wasn't getting particularly hot so I think that's a really really good result Okay, we're just well over 5 minutes now into the uh, Heat testing the power still hasn't, oh sorry, beg your pardon, the output still hasn't dropped. Uh, temperature wise, yeah, that's that's getting warm. Uh, warm, warm, come hot. Um, it does say on Max Talk's web page for this particular one specifically, it didn't mention specifically for the M1, but for the M2, it said it will, um, the intelligent overheat protection uh, will kick in when the internal temperature is 65. So I suppose where, that would depend on where that temperature is being measured from. We're kind of 55. Oh, there we go. That's uh, it's just reduced its power now, uh, and on the clock there, eight minutes 43. So six minutes, uh, and it was sort of what was it, 55ish, something like that, uh, on the outside. So yeah, the internal temperature probably would have hit 55. Sorry, 65. Yeah, that that's hot. Um, so I think that uh, that intelligent overheat protection has kicked in exactly as it's meant to do. Uh, I mean, if you're holding that in your hand, that's that's getting that's uncomfortable. But it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's dropped its power. You can, I don't know whether you can see the lux meter. Uh, I'm not the lux meter isn't measuring the output of the torch. I've I've just got it on there so I can see the relative drop in power. And as luck would have it, just as I was waffling on there. Um, uh, you saw the drop and you can see the timer. So, yep, yeah, really pleased with that. Okay, folks, we've got the uh, Max Stocks out with me now. I'll start with the um, M2. Um, I've got it on the ramping mode, starting off at, it at its lowest. And then I'm going to ramp all the way up to turbo. You probably recognise this path from uh, previous videos. And as you can see, it's uh, no problem at all with cutting straight through to the end and the light output um, from this torch is just <laughs> it's, that's very impressive um, you probably noticed that I've mentioned this on all other videos as well uh, the camera's having trouble to adjust because that that concentrated spot there that's it's just white washing out the camera uh, it, it, it's so bright it's unbelievable um, and as we increase the range down to there we're, we're certainly not going to be short of any range are we so let me just pause for a second and I'll swap over to the um, the M1. Okay, so we've got the M1. Let me just cycle through um, on its lowest mode. Now you can probably see on its lowest mode there it's 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 still throwing the um, still throwing some distance. And that's high can see with that again just a phenomenal amount of light being thrown out you know and up close I mean it's just it's just it's just too bright it's white washing out uh, in terms of distance which is of course what these two torches are designed to do uh, they're doing that extremely well uh, I don't that's 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 dropping down to medium now on a thousand let me just cycle through again so we're going low low high medium not a phenomenal amount of difference, so, you know, the jump between a thousand lumens, when, when we're relatively close range like this, about a hundred metres down there, um, at a relatively close range like this, the difference between a uh, thousand lumens and 1,615, uh, we need to increase the range before we can, we, we can see that distance. Now, let me just put the two alongside each other and swap hands with that one. So we've got the, um, the M1 now on the, uh, on the left. And now we'll move over to the M2. Let me make sure the M2's change the ramping mode. Okay. Yeah, so the M2's on its maximum. So there we've got the M2 and the M1. M1, M2. Now I think you'll be able to see there straight away, and I'll demonstrate again in a moment, 
um, the slight difference between them and I'll talk about the difference between them just when I, I move spots and get a little bit more distance on there and then we'll we'll run the same comparison again so I'll pause the video again and move a touch okay guys so now we we'll start again with the M2 and look at it to Monday on its lowest mode so let's just cycle through there to relatively close range of the available modes minus turbo because if you recall it doesn't go into turbo we have to double click and then it will jump into the turbo uh, what's that 30 yards up there um, again it, you know the camera is struggling with it it's just whitewashing out but uh, let's pop a bit of range on and I'm in turbo mode at the moment and the maximum distance I can see we're not where we're looking at the moment but as we move towards the left we'll start moving out towards 250 meters uh, and as we move along the side of this lake here, as we can see, the the, uh, the M2 has absolutely no problem with illuminating those distances. And those trees we can see at the end there, you can see, uh, I can see them with my eye a lot better than you guys will be able to see with the camera, but uh, um, that's probably about 150 metres there. That tree line in the distance, which, you know, we're, we're reaching no problem. We're probably ended up heading up towards... Well, this lake's 250, so 250 there's a little bridge that I can see, yeah, so we're lighting that up no problem. Out towards that tree line. And I don't think, let me uh, put this back to its, um, just back to high mode on its own. There we go, so that, there's high mode. Turbo, high. Turbo, now if we chuck some distance on, so we're there, sort of 150 metres there, turbo, sorry, got it wrong, turbo, gap through, there we go, high, turbo, high, turbo. Let me pause just for a second now and we'll keep this one on turbo. In fact, let me switch that one off and um, I'll compare in the minute. To, I'll put it up alongside the M1. Let me turn that off. So, uh, now we've got the M1. And let's look at the uh, the same distances and cycle through. Low. This threw me a little bit. It goes low, high, medium. Low, high, medium. And at this kind of distance here, I mean, it, it, it's that bright and that concentrated, you struggle to see the difference between the uh, the medium and high. I mean, looking at this now, if I, if, if, if I didn't remember that I was on medium, I'd, I'd struggle um, to remember which one I was on. It, it, it really is that, that, that bright and concentrated. And you go here, that's just, it's just bouncing back and uh, blinding. So let's pop it up to high and work along the same tree line that we did uh, with the um, with the M2. Uh, we're out to 150 meters there, 250 meters towards the end and, and beyond up there. Let's put the two alongside each other and I can talk about the differences. Um, okay, so now we've got them both on turbo. In fact, let's bring it a little bit closer. There we go. So we've got the M1 on this side and the M2 on this side. Bear in mind the M2 is now running at 2000 lumens and the M1 is running at 1650. But the first thing that you, that you're, well, the first thing that I noticed was the slight colour tint, the slight difference in the tint, uh, and that's because the M1 has a D-domed LED that changes the tint of the the beam somewhat, and the M1 is a little bit more concentrated, and again that is down to the the D-domed effect, and that's why the M1 is rated at 800 uh, meters, and the M2 is rated at 600. Let's throw the the distance out to 
to there and I don't know whether that's apparent to you but it is to me the yeah the, the M2 is reaching it no problem but of course the M1 with having that much more concentrated beam uh, will overlap you know the same when we put a little bit more distance on you know and it's a pretty apparent now you know now now we're heading out towards 250 meters it's pretty apparent what the uh, what the difference is there's somebody fishing over there by the way I think he's probably wondering what the hell's going on with this light show these are you know these are really really impressive uh, you, you're certainly not short of distance so I think there we, we've shown the difference between the max stock m1 and the m2 in particular with you know the beams I, it, it, I hope that the cameras show how different they are and this is why I wouldn't like to choose between them thanks very much folks